Welcome to TNT Double Shot. I'm Trent and this is Tim. Tim. I am a commercial architectural photographer and Tim it has is... to deal with everything that I mess up <laughs> and he does an amazing job. You don't mess up. <laughs> Tim's a our studio manager retoucher and I go out and collect data and Tim turns it into magic. Processing data right. all day long. Right. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. Uh, okay, so this is our first image from uh, Witten project that so we shot last. If you haven't watched the intro to this project, which we kind of walk through what we shot, why we shot it, go back to that video first, watch that, then jump over to this. It's kind of like walk an, through one a of the complete general look at the yeah, project to right. begin with. This is just going through one of the images. We're going to do an interior here, exterior next. So that is the plan. So this uh, this composition in the uh, living room. Uh, so why did we, you know, do this and go through all these different layers to do that? I wonder if I just gave anyone a seizure. Um, so first of all, we usually bracket a natural light layer with all the lights off. So you you know you bring in this highlight up near the window, and then the corresponding layers of shadow to highlight and then now why did we so if you're if you're looking at like the middle layer yeah you've got your layer. bracket like what are you thinking next like where what do i need to address next um probably reflections on the windows on the left there of screen mm -hmm. uh and that's probably why we brought that sheet out yeah it helps block that out at least for that first bit so in here there's not too much of a reflection in in this pane. There's mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, You're just getting the fireplace, right? But if you window. see this sheet brought in now, that yep. window pane is clean, so it makes less work for Tim. Uh, and on any shoot, we're constantly saying, "Oh, Tim can fix that in yeah. post." And then I get back, and I have to hear it from Tim as far as like, "Why <laughs> didn't do you it. do this?" I'm sorry, we were lazy. Um, and that's basically all we used there. We didn't use any strobe on the ceiling or anything else. It's pretty straightforward uh, after, you know, doing a lot of, of composition and styling work on this. Uh, they had a bunch of music gear, uh, guitar stuff and everything else in here. Um, a few things here in this corner. We had the idea, should we light up the um, fireplace or not? We went not lighting up because it's, you know, middle of the summer during the day. You just wouldn't have a fireplace going. So we didn't have it on. Um, and we you can usually throw uh, a light in there and post if you want. Uh, we have so many fireplaces that we have gotten lit that you can what's usually the, What's just the trick in. to a quick fire in a fireplace, Trent? the quick trick to a <laughs> or is that a secret that we don't want no, to you kidding. just get a piece of paper <laughs> fold it you know those things that you'd be like me, 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 yeah me, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kid. Yep, you yep. kind of make it into a little teepee and just put it on top of a couple logs and light the bottom four corners and then click away at one tenth of a second and usually one of them in there has enough light that you just bring in the surrounding light of right. the fire and a little bit of the fire. Because it's one thing to like paste a fire in after the yeah. fact, but you don't get the glow of the inside of, if that's what right. you're going for. That's hard to replicate. Yeah. So I would not recommend always just saying, oh, we'll do it in post. Like right. actually put a single piece of paper there. Make sure the damper is open. Yeah. Right? You'll smoke <laughs> out the house and uh, you don't want to do that. Um, but yeah, that's usually a little, unless trick. you have the luxury of a, a remote control and you can just right. click it on, but right. in this then, case, then do it. Um, but yeah, we, we pulled from their record collection, which was on the other side of the couches, adjusted the light, uh, did all the pillows, brought plants in, brought plants out, brought the little bit of artwork in, adjusted the, the pillows on this kind of day bed here, right in front of us, moved the rug around a tiny bit thought about should we have the door open or closed for that have someone walking in or out which i think we had all those options but eventually we just went with this more um you know simple quiet uh take on it which i love it you don't have to get too crazy um compositionally you know we could have gone a little bit lower in this composition as you get lower these pillows start to come up and intrude on the fireplace and eliminate you know kind of the wood here that you see so understanding the wood box what they designed there was a thought 
uh, where the light ended up on the window, the upper window there was important. If you go lower, um, let's see, you you'd start that to light raise would go up. the light and you'd see the bottom of the window. And if you do that, you have to go far enough so it's clear of the light, but then you'd end up with it between the painting and the light. So it's... You're it's just always, moving things up and down in space and trying to like right. get the best alignment. You move that the column of the tripod up and down, you get all this weirdness. And then where the corner of the couch ends up, on the circular little coffee table where the top corner of this couch in the foreground ends up on the seat of the couch in the middle ground, all of that stuff where the cord coming down on the light, you know, there's just so much to work in there. And behind this guitar, there's a few more like mandolin violin mm. cases and stuff in there, but they were black and they kind of, you know, filled that space in a little right, bit. Right. And we didn't choose to put like more wood back there you can just kind of see that there's some uh, musical instrument cases back there. And bringing this pillow out on the corner of the sofa here, just bringing it out a little bit to break all that up so it's just not gray upon gray upon gray. Um, and we, we chose to center ourselves on this right side of the vertical line of the fireplace rather than dead center of the fireplace because the dead center of the fireplace would have been the more like one point perspective, but it would have made it very, very fireplace centric and not kind of the entire wall. So there's, you know, it's not completely a one point perspective, but it's, you know, roughly, roughly in there. And that was just kind of the compromise of the whole thing. Uh, we did a vertical version of this afterwards. It's a little more fireplace centric that cuts a little bit of the stuff off on the right and gives the client an option to say, we need a quarter page ad it's a mm. more vertical. That's always a concern. Anytime you're shooting, you have to keep in mind what's the primary um, ratio and layout that your clients use on the web or advertising. And and just different firms have kind of go to like, oh, we love 16 by nine mm, or we love square right. or whatever. Um, so that was a concern. Where this light ends up, I think you end up with if you're standing in the space when you're shooting, you end up with things in very odd positions from a natural kind of interacting with the space. If you were a just lot standing of times, there, you'd be like, why is it set up like this? this right. Looks, like I would that, not want to, that it wouldn't function not right. In the right, right spot. What's going on? But when you on? see it, yeah. it looks like. So we have a lot of fakery going on all the time in this, but it, you know, you get why we're, why we're doing that just to best communicate the space while keeping it calm and lines not intersecting inappropriately or whatever else. There's visual morals. Mm. Um, yeah, I guess if we had moved more to the right, this corner would have either intersected with that line or gone past it, which I would have liked better. Um, and we could have just moved that line over and post, but there, there's a degree of imperfection that, that I think you should just leave in your images to make them feel connected mm -hmm. to reality. Um, what else compositionally? Um, I, I never like to look at the back or the side of a couch too much. You don't want like a massive forehead staring at you. Um, so I think we probably push this couch over a bit and kind of massage that. But even so, the, the side of the couch there gets a little abstracted or distorted. And that's, you know, that is what it is. But we uh, adjusted it as much as possible. Um, and the pillows slightly rising as they go towards right of frame is intentional. Anytime I'm using styling in an image, I'm hoping that it kind of ascends as it goes out of the frame. So it feels like from the sides of frame, you're coming a little bit more in that's leading you to mm -hmm. wherever the focal point of the image is, where the viewer wants to place themselves. And to me, it's kind of like, I just want to go and sit right here and look out that window to the left. Or, you know, go grab one of those guitars and sit against that right, back yeah, wall. Yep. So um, compositionally and lighting wise, is there anything else to say there? The the blending of the light on that um, the, on the wall to wood trim up in the top right there. Uh, we'll get to that later, but that's always a sensitive issue. Uh, and when we're not using a strobe in here, uh, I could have put a strobe in there and where lit would, things up. Where a would you bit. have put the strobe if if you were going to add light to this? Scene? I would have put it just dead center in the room and lit this overhead, which can be very helpful and have a nice look to it. But there's also kind of this idea of um, natural light and having a little bit deeper shadows. Uh, a lot of time can just feel 
a little bit more sincere and real mm -hmm. uh, rather than post-produced and everything else. And, and everything that I try and direct with post-production and what you do in post-production, I think works towards looking natural. Right. Yeah. Like you're, and that's, that's a weird thing with architectural photography that both you and I are aware of is that you're trying to not be, you're trying to not showcase what you're doing. Right. Yeah. You're trying to showcase the architecture. Mm -hmm. And so if we, overdo like lighting tricks or anything else compositional weirdness to to a large degree when you're capturing it it makes it about the photograph and not about the architecture right. the same with the post-production it makes it about what can we bring in and how can we push this so far to make it look you know like i would want to see post-production mm -hmm. you know right, yeah. it it becomes too loud in the secondary creativity mm. the prime you're trying to communicate the primary creativity which is this piece of architecture so just a thought um and with that i think we should move on to did we go over all the layers i think, I think it was just that yeah, right it's just and the then sheet it was kind of making the windows clean so you didn't it, have huh? to do too much yeah now the ipads shift, there uh, oh i think did you shift the screen in the window or no screen in window maybe not i don't think so I was trying to think why you bracketed it a third time or a second time. Um, oh, I don't know. Just a second. Yeah, maybe. Hmm. Yeah, the screen. The there's a screen. Is that a screen? Is there a screen? Oh, that we shift? probably you see shifted. It? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that... so another another trick. Um, the, I think that's if the you case. have screens, that or you... it's the the light. The lighting is like softer. Or something. maybe yeah. maybe that's the result of the screen then. Well, yeah. see the highlight on the side here. I think in post production, this is all even. Mm. Um, and the other thing is if, if you have a screen on sliding doors, like these are, you, you can shoot it on one side, move it to the other side, right. shoot it again. And then you don't have to have the screen in because you've shot it two places and then you pull it together. Uh, and the screen will always darken the, you won't necessarily you, be able to see it, too. but you'll have a loss of contrast and it'll be darker. And so if you can take that out, it just looks better, but you have to have a magician or do it yourself right. and it's a fair amount of work sometimes. So. There you go. Not something to save in for post. No, don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's that's yeah, probably yeah. it, right? I mean, it's funny. Like on every shoot, everyone loves you that's never met you anyway. Yeah, they're just like Tim so good. Oh, that, he takes that guy on email. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get out once in a while. Once in a while, <laughs> we let him out. All right, so yeah, let's jump over to All right, Photoshop. Walk us right through the post production, right, yeah. Tim. Um, Where do you start and why? Um, let's see. Whoop. I'm not used to look this, at this trackpad yet. I don't have a mouth. I just have like an orange blob in front of me. I appear to be moving. So, yeah. So starting wise, it's that middle composition that you were talking about. So is this an essentially untouched base layer that you started this with is, here? I mean, it's touched in as far Lightroom. as like Lightroom. So you played with yeah. highlights and shadows right. a bit here. And yeah, I mean, if you if, if I were to look at that image, my first th thought is like, all right, there's this highlight here that's mm. a little hot, the side of the sofa, and the reflection in the windows. This could be a little brighter, and there's a little brown over top right. of the stuff. Yeah, I think stuff what, like that. When I look at an image, I'm always the first thing I'm always doing is like balancing the light levels. So I'm always mm -hmm. just like, I see the bright area. I'm like, that needs to come in a little bit. How much do you do in Lightroom before you jump into Photoshop? Yeah, I mean, I don't push and pull it too far because, you know, if you're going to crank the shadows mm -hmm. up and pull the highlights way down, it starts to get flat. So I, I call I, it I just, milky. Yeah, milky, and then you get noise. And so it just, it's kind of a happy medium. Yep. Um, if I want to bring in my highlights, I'll go to the next um, bracketed image and work from there. Happy medium. Is that like a cheerful psychic? Happy medium. Yeah, <laughs> I guess so. Uh, instead of an Phew. angry medium. <laughs> A grumpy medium. A grumpy medium. Um, so yeah, what I'm thinking here is, all right, I've got a, a place to start, right? We're doing natural light. I'm not worried about adding any light mm -hmm. other than the natural light. Um, and so my next thinking here would be to bring in the highlights. Okay. That's generally the next move. Um, and, and that's the windows and the floor. Mm -hmm. And then the area kind right. of behind the little... Coffee now, table what I'm looking at it. here, is this a totally new image overlaid or is it painted in uh, it's, areas? It's, it's, it's probably the bracketed layer that was prior to that can, one. Yeah, can you so show if, it like if, that? I think if we, um, I could remember my keyboard shortcuts here. Yeah, see, it's... Oh, so that's like as so much it's, as you're it's really only bringing on in. Like, um, 
sixty percent. Okay, and that might be the darker layer. Uh -huh. um, let's see if you can see my mask. That's the mask. So I right. I'm bringing so, the windows in more, and it's a real and then feathering I'm out, feathering out the rest okay. of the room. You don't want like hard lines. Yep. And it's just it's addressing you know the hot spot up here that we were talking about. It's addressing the coffee table. I guess it's a coffee table kind mm -hmm. of what they call it. But and then the windows, right? Yep. And so that's probably pen tooling the windows, right? right? That's already are, looking a lot better, but this reflection over there is a little distracting. Right. Yeah. And then um, I think the next move is probably the windows maybe a little further because I'm still seeing a hot spot here mm -hmm. on the concrete. Yeah. Um, so that brings that in further. And sometimes I'll bring it in further than it even needs to be. So I have that as an option and then I'll, I'll put a you curve layer on it and, and brighten it back up. So almost bring it back to where it was, but having the control without having to go back to Lightroom or something. Okay. Um, so kind of overdoing it and then dialing it back. <laughs> I'm wondering if we ended up keeping this highlight on the side of that little pillow there. Probably. I had to little... see that didn't, that didn't stand out to me. And mm -hmm. I, I, I'm imagining, did I, did we... Well, yeah, I'm wondering where, like, I can't remember exactly the final image in my head right now. Mm. And I'm wondering what we did with this highlight here, the highlight on the carpet and the reflection there and how we dealt yeah, with the that. the highlight on the couch, the I don't highlight. think we addressed because you didn't shoot it that way. Really? Right. Um, I think later on we decided to use this for a piece of mail or, or mm -hmm. some sort of marketing piece. And then and I went in and removed the light on the couch. But oh, that was okay. more of a manual, like selection curves kind of more thing. of a magician move on yeah the it, because it wasn't addressed i mean i guess if you were going to dress it on site you probably would have sheeted yeah specifically the couch front right of it and... so um so you, which that, i should have probably caught see, like i said that. so we were bringing in the windows and then, mm -hmm. and then we're bright, brightening them back up a little bit right um and i think i do that again okay so there's the reflection the reflection that you now. sheeted nice all right so um, proud of myself i <laughs> sheeted something and that's, yeah, okay, let me show that initially. Uh, okay. um, and then so, okay, I guess I'm thinking mm. now that maybe this is just a little distracting and maybe a little hot, I don't know, so that's right. addressed. And that, I don't even know if you intentionally shot that oh, for course. that, or if it, I think, Damn. I think, what, what I think happened, and, I, and again, I wasn't there, so I'm only assuming, but you had, you had shot for the, the window, uh -huh. the sheet, but it happened to, yeah, because the light this? is kind of coming this way, right. and we blocked. So maybe, maybe it was a two for one. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. It's intentional. <laughs> I mean, of course. Right, but this this light we're getting down here on the floor mm -hmm. isn't isn't as distracting anywhere. as like that was. Yeah. Like that hard it's line there is kind of, I don't know. I guess you it could helps. you could do a happy medium and, and happy medium. That's going to be the, the Cheery. theme here. Cheery psychic. Um, okay, so at this point, I think. I've determined that oh the light levels to me look good like I didn't address like any overall of the, you yeah look overall at it and you're like oh it's nice overall I'm saying I like the levels I'm ready to start like removing things because mm -hmm. if if I start removing things and then then I add more and then I want to fix the light levels I'm working underneath my retouching so yeah. then I have to re okay. redo it in some so way so do you get a whole light level layer and then flatten it and then begin to retouch I don't flatten it but yeah basically I just I just a new blank layer above okay. all of that and I I'm saying I don't want to work under this anymore because I've, I've already established that this is where I want it and if yep. I do go back and have like if you have some feedback and I have to go back and work underneath that retouching layer to, to adjust some light levels or something right. It might affect the retouching that I've done. Then I will have to redo. I try not to redo that. Um, I've gotten to a point now where I, I seldom have to go back and redo retouching. Right. It's, it's, it, that's probably the most time-consuming part of the entire thing. You, is you removing know what things. I'm thinking right now is <laughs> that with uh, YouTube algorithms, it's good that we're keeping the retouching part till last because then people watch the video the whole way. Through. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, yammer on about I moved the tripod again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like yeah, okay. Next. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So, so the retouching, it's hard to see in a lot of this, but you can see a lot yeah. of it's addressed outside. That right? path was actually out there. We're it? taking the, the path and we're just kind of turning yeah. that into line. There's, that there's a few things. There's a reflection down in here. Reflection Keep toggling them back and forth. So there's that. Keep going just back and forth. Sprinkler. And then there's a standpipe in the woods and reflection and weirdness. Yeah, that was retouching because so, I don't think you okay. you sheeted that, but that right. that was really just the I don't know what is it a mullion or something. Yeah. Um, 
shadow mullion reflection something. I mean, that's, that's probably where it, a reflection back behind us this way. That's where it makes the most difference in terms of retouching. Um, everything else is just. Oh. Boy, I like that fireplace. See, I'm not used to this trackpad here. Oh yeah, oh. zoom. Yeah, there we go. Um, zoom back into the fireplace and toggle on and off. So I think yeah, there's some smoke up yeah, here that, that we, we smoke took damage out. Um, and just a little over. You know, some imperfections in the concrete. There's. The, the imperfections are everywhere, but if they're just big enough that like, yeah. if I'm looking at an image and, and something catches my eye, I'm like, right. why is that catching my eye? Do I need to remove it? You know, and, and sometimes I will. Um, I think there's probably some retouching in the carpeting. Yeah, so like the corner of the carpeting and just mm. and fluffing up and keep toggling that again. So yeah, cleaning that up there look nice. The edge of the corner of the carpet here and the corner of this little guy. Cleaning up the, the fabrics. Helps. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna guess that maybe there's some cleanup on the couches. Nope. There isn't much over on that side. There's a few little specks yeah, up here. Um, speck, yeah. yeah, that's it. it. It's really cool. kind of in the, the first third of the image here. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you can even see the retouching if I just talk about that. That's just the retouching, so you can kind of see right. where it all is. And it's majority on the windows and, and stuff. Mm -hmm. um yeah okay so now what's after the retouching the retouching so you got a light layer balance that you start out with mm -hmm. and then you do the pimple removal right so you kind of look at it as maybe like three phases mm -hmm. there's there's the light balance check retouching cleaning everything up it's phase two check mm -hmm. after that it's really kind of like oh i want to desaturate walls or do i want to desaturate do i want to bring levels up in an area do i want to saturate things right. and so that's like your adjustments is level three phase three whatever and that that's what this is um so maybe i think here i'm saying oh this is this is kind of dark back in here still mm -hmm. um it it you know it could go either way it, it, at this point i think it becomes maybe a, a personal preference or so yeah, lightening that up that better. back corner there a little bit. Lighting it up, but not so you can kind of make artificially lit or anything. Yeah, so I'm not using any of the, the bracketed images here. This is mm -hmm. all just like, this is my mask. Right. Okay. Right, and that's just a curves layer. Okay. Um, so now, why did you do one up? up there too? Just I don't know, why did I do that? Um, just do that. What did that look like? Yeah, but I it, guess I maybe was thinking it, it this worked. shadow on, yeah. on here was Dark, I don't know. That um, looks good. What am I saying next? That's a hue saturation. That's, uh, I think I was just bringing some evenness, even color to the, oh, there's oh, some green on the there. Green out. Yeah. yeah, so in an image like this, where you've got these low windows, the mm -hmm. windows that go to the ground, floor to ceiling, almost ceiling, yeah. and then you've got grass outside, you tend to get a lot of green reflect or color cast inside the space. So I, I, when I was starting out, I read a book, I forget which architectural photographer, I think it was someone in this area, mm -hmm. um, but they would bring around with them tons and tons of white sheets and oh, big, yeah. white things that they could put outside on the grass so you weren't getting right. the green bouncing into the ceilings and everything. Mm -hmm. And because, I mean, you can see like it's a little yep. green on the bottom up there, but like they couldn't do it in post because it was film. And oh, so yeah. Was, yeah, you get a lot more to yeah. do on site with that. It's crazy. That's, That's always why you a get like six images in a day, right? And we're pulling out like twenty. So, yeah, it, it, gr the green color cast can always be a challenge to remove. Yeah. Um, so, like, if I had added a light in here, the the nice thing that we could have done is like completely balance out this carpet right. evenly. Yep. But then it, it it would lose some of that authentic feel to it, and I do like this light that we have coming in here, mm. and yeah. So it, it's always a. Uh, it, perfect can look like bad plastic surgery if you're not right. careful you know right. so the other thing with it, like if you brought a light in too sometimes like if you shot it up in the ceiling you can use that as a way to to mitigate the green cast that comes right. in like light right. because you can just set the blending mode to, to color in it. It, it it can quickly remove some of the green color casts yeah. to, to eliminate some of the manual work but it doesn't always always mm -hmm. work um so that that layer there was just to kind of take some of the green out of the little seating area here. You can kind of see it. It's pretty subtle, but. Oh yeah, no. Um, what's next? 
That's such a weird expression. Yeah, no. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no. Yes, no. Okay, so I think I'm just doing the same thing to the couch. Doing some sofa, root, um, sofa colorization. Pulling some of the color out of it. Yeah. Cool. Um, I must have thought that the concrete was still a little warm or hot, and so I came in and, and pulled that down. Yeah, you gave it a little more contrast. Little feel. And then put some warmth I like how it. it feels out in the corner, the window corner there. You brought in just enough detail there. Mm. If you toggle that last layer again, you'll see it. Just that little bit, just tiny bit there. And then, yeah, adding a little bit of warmth back into it because it's it, it's getting that. Yeah, like it's you desaturated cool concrete it. concrete with the green cast. Right, you, like you took the green and you pushed it more towards blue. Right. And then by adding a kind of a warmth layer, brought but it you back can see like even evenly. down in here there's still it's still kind of warm in the concrete maybe mm -hmm. there's a little bit of a color cast which again like to just eliminate it all completely and turn everything like yeah like if i just desaturate oh concrete's supposed to be gray let's yeah. make it gray then it feels like cold and it, it would be like looking at a person who had no pores in their skin <laughs> on their face or something like this isn't yeah, right something's off here <laughs> it's too perfect right um so this is i must have thought that that was layer. still kind of dark can you um, show like just the um the whatchamacallit there? Like, again, it's yeah. just a curved layer. Um brightening up. I must have thought that the, the shadows were still yeah. kind of deep. You could get away without that if it's if you wanted. Um looks good. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Curves and then, layer. Okay, if looking at the layer stack here, I'm saying now that the I, the critical thing I would say at this point is this corner of that top section just feels a little mm. little too stark Let's see and that. bright Let's see that now and, and as you know i didn't address that at all in the stack i must have just thought that i mean it was just like that from the natural shot right so it's not like we are faking it or i think know. i think a selection of the the corner up here right yeah and then taking a curves layer and pulling that down just like to, i'd pull it from here right. a little bit like make it match that but obviously I think this is getting a lot of light from the floor and the surface out on the patio and mm. it's bouncing up into there. Mm -hmm. But yeah. So at this point I think I've 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 done all my adjustment layers in terms mm -hmm. of like targeting specific areas. And then I'm going on to like more of a general Hue global and saturation three uh, adjustment where I'm saying <laughs> I want to affect the whole image here. And I think in this case, whenever you have like wood tones, mm -hmm. I always like to pull like some yellow out of that, even if it's like five to 10% yeah, because like it can get interiors. like kind of radiant and like really kind of bright. Yeah. And wood is always like super difficult because that in itself produces complete. color cast on the space. Yep. And so I'll generally it's do like, like a, a feedback. Right. It's kind of like a speaker feedback. It's weird. Unless the entire inside is wood, then you're like, well, it's just, it's, it is what it is. But done. Walk and away. you can see it. And it's more of a, a muted, desaturated image. It's very, it's probably only 10%. I guess I can't see that because I don't have that open. But um, if I click on it, what's it going to tell me? I bet you if I go into like the yellows, yeah, okay. fifth, negative 15. So I pulled like 15%, I guess. Much. Yeah. Um, how do I close that? Close. Oh, that'll work. All right. So, so yeah. So I'm, I'm just I'm desaturating it all, and it, you know it affects the outside. It affects I anything like the yellow. Feel, though it, it, it an better. image is mostly yellow. I feel right. like it generally, like if you affect if you if you sample a, a spot in an image, it's, it's nine times out of ten, it's like yellow. Hmm. Um, and then this is an overall brightness feels nice maybe there's some contrast in there uh, just the overall brightness uh toggle that one again and like just keep going back and forth there's something about the i think a layer. lot of times i'll look at like the histogram on mm -hmm. an image like this and I, if my highlights aren't all the way to the end edges like 255 i think it is and the blacks are at zero i'll i'll, I'll usually stretch that out so you're, you're getting the full spectrum of like highlights and shadows hmm. you don't always have to do that um i think maybe that's probably why i did this but there you go then yeah straighten it out it's right, well, not much there you're tiny pretty, bit pretty good there um and then the last little thing i think maybe after your feedback i think you can kind of see 
you were talking about earlier how you kind of stuffed some things in here right. and i think that last just eliminates yeah, that, what was that right here oh, um look at that. and so yeah that's it and that's how you get a Oop. nice image uh so, first you start with great architecture right <laughs> and then you i mean all would, that. looking at it now i know you point out the ceiling and then the couch you could probably address but yeah i mean it, in any project you're going to be so closely entangled with it that there's there's going to be stuff you miss no matter what um and that you could always go back and change and the thing i keep realizing especially since Amber, my wife, went with me on a shoot recently in Boston. Uh, you become aware of what you're doing more when someone's around that's never seen it done before. Mm. And you're just constantly standing there sharing like subjective opinion. Like right. it's observational opinions and feelings. Like that's all it is. And then you have to make real world technical adjustments to accommodate what you feel. Mm -hmm. It's such a weird interaction of those that you spend a whole day not not doing accounting like numbers and like right answer, wrong answer. It's all just feel it and then say, express it. Express it. Yeah, yeah. It, it's so weird that at the end of the day, your mind's just like, yeah. and you <laughs> I think that can happen too when you're staring at numbers. I'm yeah. Sure, but. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm sure it fries your mind in a different way. Right. Right. Uh, and this is just that kind of thing. And I wonder like at the end of a day of you subjectively looking at this, cause you're not doing anything right or wrong here either. Right, you're right. looking at it thinking like, all right, what do I want? What's Trent going to think he wants? And then the making it great yeah. and what the client wants. And like at the end of the day, you must be a little like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's like I always think about it as like like a musician, like can only I assume play like a guitar for only so long before their fingers mm. start to hurt and they right. got to stop. I feel like I'm. it's kind of the same way with me. Like <laughs> I only home. sit at a computer for you so long. You go home like this every yeah. day. <laughs> t-rex out of here right <laughs> been editing all day have you but yeah it's you get to a point where you're just like i gotta step away and and it's also good to step away too and like you can stare at an image for so long and then do you'll you work miss on things. one to a point and then start to work on another intentionally and go back and forth i try and finish it to right. a point I mean, until you're gonna see it and then because i know i'm going dinner to dinner on back. a plate do you eat one thing at a time or do you no. pick from them all evenly depends what the food is yeah. Really? I, it depends if it goes together. Well, I guess if it's on the plate, maybe it goes together well. But I mean, I can see stuffing and cranberries. You have to eat those together. Yeah. I guess, yeah, there's an argument Fresh that just mix everything together because you're eating it all anyways. Right. But I, I'm like, I'll, for some reason, I start on one thing. If I have a plate of several mm. things, I eat all of that. And then I move on to all of that, all of that, all of that. Amber, like evenly picks across <laughs> until like there's just like one bite of each thing left <laughs> it's so weird i'm just wondering so like, you're saying like do i just finish an image and then move on to the right. next one or do you like look at the entirety of the project and work a little bit until you feel like i'm not seeing this image anymore because i've seen it so completely like there there's and you know to go down a rabbit hole a little bit i think there's a, a saturation of you're you're so involved in it that you've you've saturated your emotional experience and all you are seeing now is the articulate version of what it is mm. and you can't just see it and that's why we start to do stuff like this when we look at images or right. try and see it differently um some i wonder if you just took it and you flipped it upside down and looked at it like that <laughs> for a bit like just to weird yeah, it out. yeah, yeah. Can, i've seen the photographers do that where they'll flip the image like like uh yeah Ver vertical or well that and then you can see like oh stuff. it needs like the highlights are way stronger than i thought or right. or something like that just seeing in that different perspective right. right i don't do that maybe that's a good thing to do just flip everything upside down and we're solving problems here because then i guarantee you if you flip it upside down you'd see this as the foreground you're like whoa that's bright, bright. you know yeah. what i mean i don't can know you why flip it right here right now like real quick? um yeah actually let's see let's get crazy uh where is that vertical Boom. oh i don't know thinking 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 layered is it gonna just flip the it layer or the flip. entire no, no. seems like it did the whole thing 
That's interesting. I yeah. thought this now, felt see brighter. Now, like, this feels. That's weird. Interesting. And then, like this, all of a sudden, like where are you drawn? Where is your attention drawn? Drawn no. here on the coffee table for me on the coffee table. This spot here. That, that's and all this. fine and good. But what are we going to do in the actual video right now? Are we going to be on the top? or Are we still going to be on the? <laughs> we should flip. <laughs> we should flip. We too. should be upside down up here hiding. All right, that. Sorry, you were saying. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. You just the weight of the the highlights are up here now, that's and it just seems more predominant, right? Like, I don't, I guess I don't really this, notice that as yeah, much. Yeah, nowhere near as distracting yeah, as I thought yeah. it would be. That's weird. Like, all of a sudden, the like higher, I'm drawn the, here. the upper portion of the image feels the more, Yeah, that's where we're telling everyone to look right now, right? Kind of, yeah. I don't know. The, do we have this, um, this image without the highlight on the I, sofa? We used it for it something. On? I couldn't find it the other day. I looked. Oh, the post, you couldn't find the postcard? No. I, it might have been a mailing or something. I don't know where. Maybe it was we just used it for something. an email because we stopped Maybe. doing postcards because no one's in the office. Yeah. So I have to I figure know. that out. Mm. Maybe we just have to do way more postcards and send them to everyone's home in the continental U.S. But, um, that's interesting. I wonder if, if this. I always like flipping an image because then like if you think of this as the floor now, like you're walking right. in and you're just. I'm waiting for someone to design and build a house upside down I'm sure that's been done hasn't it no i don't know but that'd be so weird what would you sit on <laughs> i would this sit on the edge of this pointless conversation the ceiling with and... trent and tim <laughs> <laughs> but what, how crazy would that be like a whole house and furniture and everything's on the ceiling we need an eccentric eccentric billionaire to do this yeah <laughs> Someone uh, will point out where that's happened and let us know. You're in the but. upside down. How would the fireplace work, right? Mm. <laughs> yeah, okay, we're off topic here. But it, it's an interesting exercise to flip it upside down and look at it as a graphic design problem. Like, mm. good should good graphic design, you know, the orientation up or down, should that matter? Right. And I don't... I, I don't think it should. You should, you know, uh, understand an image from the orientation that everyone's going to look at it, but by turning it upside down, you see it differently and, and pick out some things. Right. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. It, just gives now, you a it gives you a different perspective. Now I can't not see that this to me feels like it's a little too bright here in the, in mm. like from coffee table to side of sofa draws too much attention. And so in shooting that, what I would have done now is I would have stood right on this side of the little daybed thing to block all the like direct light coming mm. in on here. Um, and just left like this feeling of the light coming across the concrete. I right. Think. Right. So. Yeah. By going way off topic and that's not that far off topic. It's just an interesting way to here. think about like, yeah, like where you're, where you're drawing the attention to. Right. Um, cause you have full control over that when you're in post-production and you don't want to, take away from what the architecture and the, the natural light is telling you, but you can mm. enhance and, you know. Hmm. Well, look at that. We're There's a little recording thing. I don't know, my, there's a timer there. I didn't look at that. actually notice that's cool. If any of you have hung in for 40 at? minutes watching minutes. us drone on. Well, you'd be 44 minutes on the other one, and you might be over an hour and geez. a half into this. Good for you guys. Thanks for sticking around. <laughs> Stay tuned for the next 45. No. All right. Yeah. So the next one, we're going to look at it. We're uh, doing the exterior. exterior. Yeah, yeah. That'll probably be a little. little it's a little less complicated. Interiors yeah. are difficult. But yeah, that's everything that we've gone through. That's just talking about an image. Like to capture it is so much harder. Mm. And that's why it takes so long. But anyways. All right. That's been TNT double shot on image number one from the Witten lakeside cabin project we'll call it i guess and next we have the exterior image mm -hmm. to go through so yeah so thank tune you tune in subscribe like share whatever uh let us know what we're hitting on that's interesting and what we should talk less about and give us some feedback and we'll try and really tailor this to be the most informative thing or if you have some suggestions that we do this with live with someone else right yeah at the same time or something who knows we're open to change ish <laughs> sure all right Anything thanks else? um stay tuned for the next part thanks Bing.